It is time for National Scissoring Day. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. So I loved it. Acclaimed come out. Huge pop. Uh, Castro has a few raps about they're the home, best homegrown team, and they're in D.C., so there's some jokes about Joe Biden stuttering and stuff. So Anthony Bowen starts. Now, I've watched the Acclaimed for as long as they've been in, a- in AEW, and it has the impression is always, and the in, in ring, they're both great, but Caster is always the one that's rapping. He has creative different stuff to say every week. Bowens just shouts, Name of city, the acclaimed has arrived. And he has recently added, of course, Scissor Me Daddy Ass, and they do that. So, this, I'm sure it wasn't the first promo I've heard him cut, but it felt like the first promo I've heard Anthony Bowens cut. It was awesome. This fucking guy hit it out of the park. What a star. Yes. Oh my God. It's great. They're the best team in AEW history, the winningest team in AEW history, the best homegrown team in AEW history. Uh, they point out the Scissor Me Daddy Ass t-shirt is the number one t-shirt of 2022. AEW now stands for Acclaimed Every Wednesday. We're going to celebrate by scissoring, he says, and I know a thing or two about scissoring. Wink, wink. Uh, he's explaining this. Explaining scissoring is a handshake, a sign of friendship, a sign of a true team. People want to be represented by a real team, not two random dudes thrown together like Keith Lee and Sneaky Swerve. Which is my new favorite nickname. So, Daddy Ass cuts him off at some point. He's got something to say. They brought the mention of Swerve's name. He wants to point out it's not Swerve's house. It's Daddy Ass's house. He went to City Hall today because he How was many a- people's fucking house is this? That's a lot of dispute. We got Paige. We got Swerve. Now we got Daddy Ass. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's this got house... Brit. It's a big house. There's room for all it of them. It is a pretty big house, yeah. but... So... <laughs> So uh, Daddy Ass says he went to City Hall. He was asked to present them with this. He gives them a gift wrapped in gold paper. It is, of course, giant scissors. The scissors to the city. The scissors to the city. Anthony is running with the scissors until they warn him, don't run with scissors. So it's finally time for Max Caster's turn to speak. And don't mis- don't get me mistaken, he's a star too. As he's explaining what a glorious day this is and how happy this is scissoring to be scissoring. And he scissors Bowens and adds... Peace be with you, Anthony. (laughs) I laughed so hard. So 40 years ago, here in the city of Washington, D.C., Caster's dad was on a team that won the Super Bowl championship. That Super Bowl ring was his prized possession. And these tag team belts, these world tag team belts, they're his prized possession. This city represents division in our country, but we can all agree that everyone loves the acclaimed. No left, no right, no red, no blue, because everyone looks good in pink. We are the people's choice. The People's Voice, the first ever bipartisan scissor to unite this country. They're all going in for the big group handshake. And Shivani, like, he softly mutters, softly and sincerely mutters, this is all so wonderful. And he meant it. (laughs) And you know what? He was right. It was wonderful. But then Swerve's music hits. And I think it's still Shivani who mutters, sneaky Swerve. (laughs) This segment was so great. So Swerve comes out. Says it's the most idiotic thing he's ever seen. And, and the great thing is, he's not wrong. This was great, but it was also idiotic. You can be both things. So uh, the belt should be on Billy Gunn's shoulders. He's the only reason the acclaimed one. Next week in Toronto, it's Billy Gunn versus Swerve. This is a thing that's going to happen in oh, yeah. 2022. Live. Shan Live. Television. Shane Strickland yes. versus Mr. Ass. Huh. Bro, on Monday, they've got the DX reunion. Yes. And everyone's going to be there except Daddy Ass. Yeah. And I am fascinated to see, do they make an entire DX segment without, oh, scissor me, Daddy chance? I don't think it's possible. They we'll should bring see. in They should bring in Bart Gun in a DX shirt in disguise. See if anyone can recognize him. So uh, Swerve has his final line about, he pulls out a stone and it says, rock beat scissors. But this brings out his old enemy, enemy, smart Mark Sterling, who has legal papers and paper covers rock. He says, what these people want is you three scissoring me. And so they do, by which I mean they lay him out and they do the scissoring leg drop to the nuts. Swerve again. This is all idiocy beyond him. He just rolls his eyes and leaves. Billy calls him back and makes it clear that he accepts the match. And then finally, the acclaimed and daddy ass do their three-way scissoring and the place goes crazy. Four... The life of me. I can't explain this, but people completely love it. Dude, it was absolutely great. 
and the acclaimed got this scissor me daddy thing over. Well, first, first we got over daddy ass, and then we got over scissor me daddy ass. Then, like, we went to the pay per view, and everybody wanted them to win. And they didn't, but they ended up, you know, getting the titles a couple of weeks later. And this act is over. And if you're a longtime wrestling fan, you've seen a million segments like this on WWE television. They just announced something wacky is going to happen next week. And it's like a wrestling thing. Something wacky is going to happen. It's preposterous. It's ridiculous. You'd never see it in real life, but you would see it in professional wrestling. And I was watching this segment, and... This probably make people mad, but I'm talking about the old regime. This was a total WWE segment, but it was better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because this is the kind of thing that they would have done in WWE. But you know, and I know, and everybody mad at me right now knows, that if Vince was in charge, Keith Lee and Swerve would have come out. They would have ruined the party. They would have destroyed the scissors. They would have gotten heat. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And that would have been the end of yes. National Scissoring Day. Yes. But that did not happen here. They promised you this celebration. They gave you an incredible, happy celebration. This sneaky, snarky fucker came out and tried to ruin it. But at the end of the day, he didn't. They announced a match. Everybody cheered because they want to see the match. They beat up a nerd. They did the three way scissor. And everybody was fucking happy. And, hey, if you want to get heat on him next week, whatever. You want to beat up Billy Gunn, whatever. We got this moment, and it was great. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid, and so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been, like, a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up, and there were Ewoks in the tree. That was definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down. And all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. This is the weird thing he says. Yeah. It is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.